Hi everybody, welcome to Draw for Initiative. This is Tina, my dearest friend and partner in crime for painting board game art. And my <laughs> name is Sarah. No, we don't rob banks. We just do paint board game art. <laughs> my name is Sarah. I'm the artist band Pinselgeschichten and owner of this channel. And the second person in the duo for painting board games. Today we have Elysium, which is a very lovely game for two to four players that are 14 years and up for about 60 minutes around. My dear, what did you focus on when you painted? What did you choose? What did you like? Good question. I forgot. I indeed forgot it. Woohoo! Oh, yeah! <laughs> huh, did you get it already? <laughs> Uh, well, I made uh, kind of a synthesis of uh, the goddess uh, Athena mm -hmm. and yeah, the owl, which is her symbol in the game, and which looks quite derpy. So I yeah, like that. It's, it's yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. It's it's a nerdy owl. She looks like a total bookish nerd. Whatever you will see in a minute. <laughs> I was cursing quite a lot. Good thing you can't hear that. Yeah. Oops. So what did you? Um, I liked the um, the transfer from the upper section of the game to the lower to the Elysium, and I did focus on that part of the game having Sharon. I hope that's how you pronounce him, Karen, Karen, the God. Uh, insert word here. Beep. And uh, I did well. Depict him shipping a couple of dudes to Elysium. So let's see how we did there. And there we go. Yay! Uh, I foresee that you will draw an owl. <laughs> Am I correct? Oh. I foresee that I will swear quite a lot in the brightest colors and languages you don't even know. Well, I did delete the audio track from the original, so... Such a shame. Well, I had a lot of fun editing, don't get me wrong. It was <laughs> quite... I learned a few things, I gotta say. New words, new languages. <laughs> they are now in my book of dirty words, but uh, yeah, this this time around, uh, excuse my French, the supplies really fucked with you again, right? Mm-hmm. They hate me. And I, I, I can't, for, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why that is, because we use the same materials <laughs> and it's not that, like, for example, you will use um, a hot press paper, I do have a cold press paper, and uh, for whatever reason, it's... Yeah, I, I tried the same things on the hot press paper as well, and I cannot figure out why they why they are so difficult for you and not when I do things. And the thing is, I, I was watching and you don't do anything that is not usual or that, that is not the way you should use that supply. You use it the correct way and still it fucks with you way more than it does with me. And I, I, I don't know why. Maybe there's a curse or something. That it must be a curse. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. What curse is it? How can we lift it? Do we have a seance here or whatever? It's, it's, Burn the studio. It's the same thing as back then when I worked in IT and people swear to me they didn't change anything and still it doesn't work. It worked earlier. You know, that kind of curse. So it's yeah, probably maybe. error 50, which is 50 centimeters in front of the sheet of paper. I don't know. Well, you sit 60 away, so you cannot be the error. So, hmm, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it's just frustrating because, um, for one, I see you struggle with it and I, I cannot help you because I, I don't know what to change for for it to maybe not suck as much. But, uh, yeah, it was one of the not so easy to paint paintings well it turned out quite differently when than what i planned for mm -hmm. it but yeah in the end i for the struggles i had i thought it was all whitish well the the background really helps a lot and yeah. makes the painting pop so um you got back quite a bit of uh depth and brightness there just by putting in a very dark background. Yeah. So. And you don't even bother nope. penciling anything. Nope. 
Nope, I'm just going in with watercolors. But Hansley, I, I, I'm, I'm making up words. It's fine, totally I awesome. <laughs> totally awesome. I know what you mean. Um, I, I did pretty much use the same technique that I used on the second painting for uh, mm -hmm. Kingdom Death. Yeah. Um, so I'm drawing backwards, so to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, since I didn't have anything planned that is super detailed, I thought, oh, this is this is one of the paintings where I could do that again. And Well, it is to my benefit there with uh, the overhang of the cave and the water that I'm gonna color in in a minute here. So yeah, indeed, the result is quite impressive. I uh, was looking, staring at it for a while when I got it in my hands first. Thanks. Uh, again, I really love what you do with colors, and uh, it's always impressive to me. So. I'm yeah. brushing hard. Thanks. It's also <laughs> also it's interesting to see for me as um, the first time you tried this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the one to finish it and yes. getting in lines. Yes. And uh, now it's interesting to me uh, to see what you will do, how you will add the lines because I uh, back then had a little struggle to mm -hmm. uh, okay to which field um, of color do I stick mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. to put those lines to put at put it in a middle, put it, you know, like um, a border, out, uh, an outline for, yeah. for the fields of uh, color. So I'm um, interested to see what you will do. And there's my first mess up, one of multiple. And you know, this is ink that is permanent ink, waterproof once it's dry and it was yeah. really bone dry. There was and still the first something. First thing that was still some green sticking to that um, brush. brush. Mm. And also, yeah, it uh, did liquefy my tint for some reason. And that was the point uh, where I first stopped because the, mm. the, pa uh, the, the paper was always uh, already curling and yeah, and uh, you can see a couple of hands there because uh, I <laughs> came to your desk. <laughs> I'm proof of my hands on the upper part. That's just funny. <laughs> But uh, I was trying to figure out with you how to save that painting too because oh my, you have put. Stop. Look oh. at look at this uh, color work on your oh, side. I'm sorry yeah. to, for interrupting, but it's no, no just problem. amazing. It's I just really a shitload of that. water. And yeah, and, jumping in color, and I just love how it flows there. So yeah. that's mm. a more positive approach on those <laughs> paintings, I guess. Yeah, so. but you need to have cold press water for the, uh, watercolor yeah. paper for that. Mm. Uh, the hot press one will buckle and curl and yeah. peel like it did for you there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I feel hot press water cannot handle as a hot press watercolor paper, I should say cannot handle as much water as the cold press one can mm -hmm. so maybe that is why even with in comparison quite quite a little amount of water yeah. there you had that much peeling going on yep yeah. i just wanted to you know like put a shadow of sepia on it and mm -hmm. it didn't work out it's yeah uh, that was my very first mess up the lines already getting thin thinner from peeling mm -hmm. and yeah I also having a tint to the paper, having from that a tint green, that I didn't green. want yeah. because I wanted to keep it light and bright, like you saw in the uh, illustration earlier, which meant it was in the in the um, yeah that the one from the book, right yeah. from the rule book, yeah yeah you, mm -hmm. you could see could see that in the beginning of the video there was uh, the original mm -hmm. I was uh, taking from, so yeah it didn't work at all. Yeah, at that point. Um, so there's my next, next try one. on that. Yeah. Next day, I was really brave to going back. Yeah, I, I was thinking about footing that. Yeah, in the you were pretty much uh, one second away from ripping that piece of paper and restarting. And I, I really liked the outline, so I somehow tried to convince you, please stop, please stop, please stop. Please stop. You could save it. You could save it. You could save it. Be brave. <laughs> and my feeling was it was, would be easier to put down that outlines again and uh, start yeah. all over. Yeah. But I thought, well, it's always a shame to just throw things away and mm -hmm. not learn anything from it. So I, yeah try to keep it up even if, if it wouldn't be as nice as a, of a painting as I wished for it. Yeah but still uh, you did save it and you made something with it that is quite nice to look at. So I really like what the background did for your piece there. It's, yeah. It really made it pop and that's yes it's maybe not what you had in mind when you started and yes it's uh, quite the struggle there for you but 
well, you managed, you made something and you saved it. Yeah, and there we are together choosing the colors I put mm. on because uh, still I am not that much able to see which uh, are the colors I want to paint. So I needed your help for that. Uh, quite glad for you helped me there. <laughs> no problem so, at all. So that I didn't even mess up more. It's funny to me though. You, there are some paintings where you're, where you, at least to me, seem very sure of what colors to take, and then there's some paintings that you're not as sure of yourself. Like when it comes to choosing the colors you want to use, is it because you like one painting more or one game, one subject more than the other, or is it just specific colors that you have difficulties with? Or? Um, depends on mul multiple things. Uh, for example, here the material isn't always as obvious with the colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you put down the tombos, they look uh, different than on the Quite caps. different yeah. than, yeah. than uh, the caps. Mm -hmm. And also liquefied, they look different than, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. than the um, intense versions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this for once. Uh, so, also, um, when I needed to combine different colors for certain shadings mm -hmm. and stuff, that's the thing I can't really calculate. That's... I can't really okay. um, know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have the feeling that you know pretty well uh, which colors uh, mixed color consists of and that you know which you need to reproduce oh, okay. that. Because um, for the last two paintings that you did, that I'm not going to name here, you didn't seem to have any trouble there choosing your colors and they were very harmonic. So I didn't really mind uh, those. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering, what is it with you that maybe sometimes gives you a bit of a difficulty there and sometimes you're just spot on and it seems very easy for you to choose the colors I'm that you I'm just thinking which with. was the second last. I, ah, yeah. Um, I'm... Mouth breathe talking here. <laughs> Lucky for you, you cannot see that. It's um, not. It's not. I pretty. didn't use many colors for those, and so I just needed to do some color repetition, and it mm -hmm. worked out. I, but I didn't mind really okay. much. Because oh, it, it, it's just fascinating to me that so, uh, though this is pretty much in the same spectrum of the colors you yeah. chose for the one that I just yeah. mouth briefed. Uh, and this is the extreme ugly stage, just to yeah, mention that. Yeah, every, every painting goes That's goes the extremest ugly stage. ugly stage I ever had, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. At least uh, from what I can remember <laughs> top of my head there. Yeah. But um, yes, so it, it's just very interesting to me that sometimes... It's, it seems as easy as breathing for you to choose the colors you want and to have the effect that you seem to want. And sometimes it's l just like, oh, oh gosh, I'm, I'm learning something totally new and I don't know anything about <laughs> it. So I'm just curious how your mind works there, where, where you can, uh, well, maybe have things be a bit easier for you once in a while. And there you go with your line works. Yes. It's really interesting. I'm just, uh, you know, paying attention to that right now because, <laughs> like I said, I was wondering how you would um, work with that. And it seems, um, yeah, logical to me. And I, now I want to go back to that painting and redo that <laughs> and try that. <laughs> well, yeah. But I should have figured that you would probably work with thicker, thicker lines than I usually do. I, I didn't really work with very many thick lines. I'm still with water. Ah, that's still the water. This is yeah, still watercolor. I'm having quite a bit of the white gel pen in the end to have the I highlights, know. the ripples on the water. Yeah. But uh, I, if I remember correctly, I'm not going to have any black ink marker. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to use right. the watercolors with not a lot of water, but more yeah. like thick pigment there. You pull the, um, the water the borders, to the bowl. Yeah, the yeah. borders are closer together, so that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. All right. Because in the beginning, I didn't want to have the color to color to close because they are wet and then they uh, blend and merge and yeah. make mud. And yeah. so I always leave a border and then pull it in once wow. it's dry. That's nice. 
So maybe I should have tried. I, I was in the beginning thinking about masking fluid, using it, and I did not because I, at that point I only had the gooey one that you didn't like. Meanwhile, yeah. like last week I got delivered the blue one. Oh my. So we got the good one again. I'm not sure. <laughs> It's It handles way better than <laughs> the uh, white one. I, I'm not sure if I will try in, this, in the nearest future. You, you should maybe try it on one different kind of a paper that you haven't used yet. It's it's very textured. It mm. almost feels like canvas, and it's a very thick cardstock almost for watercolor. That's the one that I'm using there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you have better luck there. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention, since I'm seeing on the screen that we are ending the video soon-ish, that you struggled for 84 minutes. And I uh, colored for 29. So <laughs> not having any line of work and no screw-ups. Yeah really made this a very fast painting for me there so yeah and there you see the difference a background can make yeah it's it's really it's astonishing right just a solid black background and your owl athena just makes boo yeah woohoo i'm here i'm supposed to look like this <laughs> she does she she is a very pretty owl uh -huh, uh -huh. and she's a very wise bird yeah yeah she has all the knowledge pretty self-aware yes she is <laughs> and maybe she's in love with what's my dude's name again uh in german we would say Charon, but so we just say the german version now <laughs> People that are not German, sorry for our accent, but you got to deal with I, it. I think the Greeks could handle mm. this. Because... Yeah, they, they would probably cringe now. Sorry, folks. Mm. But yeah, we're still learning. <laughs> but there goes the gel pen. No black liner. So just gel pen and watercolor on my stream. <laughs> Alrighty, and there it is, the Biggie Owl. We thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel in case you're new. We have lots of art and board game stuff for you throughout the week. Some are together with, with my husband, some are just solo, and some are with Tina, like every Wednesday, 9 a.m. CET, Yay. just saying. <laughs> you can also visit us on Board Game Geek for the geek list of this uh, Draw for Initiative project. If you want to look back or write a comment there, that's totally fine too. And uh, if you want to want us to paint a certain game, just let us know. We're definitely open for that. <laughs> Have a very good day. Bye. Bye.